Hello, it's me, and it's time for another cruise solve video. This one comes from Raphael, and this is the uh, master dodectahedron. So what a master dodectahedron is, is basically it's a master octahedron, but in a dodecahedral form. Uh, so the puzzle itself is really a, a great work of art. It moves very, very well. What I really like about it is the symmetry of the puzzle. It looks like a perfect dodecahedron. So it's got the perfect look of a true platonic solid, and yet it's this, it's really a disguised other kind of platonic solid, which is an octahedron. So though it is a 12-sided puzzle, it's really a face-turning 8-sided puzzle. So hence the word dodecahedron. But what makes this even more challenging is this is the master version of this. So it's a master dodecahedron. So anytime I get a new puzzle, what I like to do is I like to see what kind of algorithms and commutators can I uh, use to help move this puzzle around. So I can correlate some of this with uh, basic techniques of how I solve an octahedron. Now the first thing to do is find out where my corners are. And there's going to be three of them for, for turning face. So I've got this shape here, this shape here, and this shape here. So I'm going to say that these guys are the corners. And this isn't exactly like a face turning octahedron because it appears that I don't have a central piece. Instead I've got these three here and I've got these over here. So let's see what I need to do in order to um, move things around. Now, I remember from my regular dodecahedron that the corners can have almost any position because it's only these two faces that are dependent on, the, on, on this color here, which means I can make these any faces at all. So I have to decide what kind of a configuration that I want. What kind of color configuration do I want to put this puzzle in? And uh, what I like here is I've got the red, white, and blue going clockwise. So I've got to make sure that this blue is on this side over here. I've got red opposite, now the next thing close to red, I guess, which is purple. I've got my greens opposite each other, dark green and light green. I've got my dark blue opposite light blue. I've got my orange opposite pink. And I've got my yellow opposite uh, white. I've also got my gray opposite kind of a turquoise. So that's the configuration I think makes the most sense. Normally what you're going to see in a Rubik's Cube puzzle is uh, orange is going to be opposite red. But I'm going to forego that this time so that the pink can be opposite orange. Alternatively, I suppose the pink can be opposite red and the purple can be opposite orange. So that's a possibility too, but I'm going to try to get it into this position when I solve it. Okay, so when encountering a puzzle like this, um, the first thing to do is uh, just see if there, I can find ways of moving pieces around. So, when looking at this, if this is a, a master octahedron, this, this, and this, these are all uh, corners. So I'm going to see about moving these guys. Well, if these are corners, then this is probably edges that have to be reduced. So I'm going to reduce them more intuitively, I think. But in terms of moving these guys, well, let's see if I can design an algorithm, starting off with, uh, well, if I were to call this an R, well, instead what we'll do is like a down, down, up, up. So, what if I were to do an octahedral maneuver that I've used before, moving this down here, this down to here, and then do down, down, up, and then move it back up, and we'll reverse it to down, up, up. Okay, so what I found is this moved here, this moved here, and this moved here. So that's pretty good. I can move these guys. What about these guys over here? I'll do the same thing, but slice it down this way. So we'll go down, 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 up, and then up, down, up, and up. So you can see this move to here, this move to here, and this move to here. And I kind of suspected that was going to happen with this. So now I can, I, I've got these seemingly moving in the same direction, but I can separate them out by the different layers. So that's pretty good. And uh, from time to time, I may have to use, I may have to move these middle pieces, because I can line these up, but I remember that from the master octahedron, I start to run into trouble with the last piece here, much like I did with the Elite Skew. So if I did a similar algorithm, let's see what happens if I, if I design something um, where I might be able to move this around. So if I do R, 
you, but I'm going to slice you down here. R I U I. Well, U R U I R I. So that's going to be my commutator. I'm going to do a middle move though. And that middle move, I think, if I hold this to here, or maybe I'll hold it to here, is I'm going to move this. Now, let's see how we can do this. Unless I do R. Yeah, I'll make this my R. It might be a little easier to remember. So I'm going to move this up and do R U R I U I. Then move it down and do U R U I R I. Okay, so let's see what happened. This orange went to here, this light blue went to here, and this purple went to here. Uh, it did move these guys as well, but I'm not going to worry about that because these are, I'm probably going to move last. I'm just curious, I'm just wondering how I can move these around, but it did not affect this, or this, or this, and that's what I'm looking for. Let me put this into muscle memory again, so I'm going to go up, R, U, R, I, U, I, bring it down, reverse it with U, R, UI Ara. Okay, now the last one should move this blue to here, this purple to here, this orange to here. So R U R I. Oops. Forgot to do my middle move. I'm gonna move this up and do R U R I U I. Move it back and U R U I R I. Okay. So I have ways of moving these guys around and these guys around, should I need to. Now you may ask, how, how did I come out with that? Well, what I do is I first do a commutator and see what pieces I can isolate. So I'm going to do R, U, R, I, U, I. And I look to see what pieces I can isolate. And this piece is isolated here. Notice everything else along this plane is fine except for this piece right here. So I know that if I do a middle move here and I move it back, it's only this piece and two others that are going to be affected. So I do this with every new puzzle that I get, is I do a commutator, and before I reverse it, I look to see what piece is isolated and it's this piece. These pieces moved around too, but I don't really care about that. So U, R, U, I, R. Okay, so now that I have that, I think I have enough to go about the process of solving this. And once again, the first thing I do is I correlate this with another puzzle, which is the face turning out to Hedron. And I try to do a similar algorithm to see how I move these pieces around. Then if I have pieces that I'm not too sure of, is I do a commutator, which is two moves and undoing those two moves. Um, and I see if, if I can isolate a middle move here. With that middle move, I do that middle move and then I undo that commutator. In this case, R-U-R-I-U-I, do a middle move then you then you are you are right uh, kind of reversing it but I first look to see what I can isolate so once again by doing R U R I U I I know it's the easiest thing in the world to reverse it but first I look around and I see in this layer this piece is isolated so by doing any move like this is gonna make everything the same except for that isolated piece but I'm not going to go through that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and scramble it because I think I have what I need to solve it. So in terms of the quality of Raphael's puzzle here, uh, the movement is very smooth. So you can see. Now I like the shape of this puzzle. I like the fact that it has a very classic look as a platonic solid. It's got a very classic dodecahedral look to it. And all the pieces look fairly the same, very similar, which I also like as well. I also like the fact that this is a shape modification of another platonic solid. And to be honest with you, although I like challenging puzzles, those that are jumble-only puzzles or fudge-only puzzles or whatnot, they're, they're neat, but there's a certain degree of chaos to them that are not quite as appealing to me. But Raphael's modifications are always, always fun for me. All right, so continue to uh, go through the process of scrambling here. All right, so how shall I approach this? Well, the first step that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to uh, uh, reduce the centers. So that's these guys over here. 
we get the scrambles a little bit better. So the way that I'm going to reduce um, the centers now, these are actually edges on an octahedron, but they're sort of they're sort of off center, I guess. But these are octahedral edges, and what I'm going to do is line these two and then put these two in. So let's see how I can do that. These two are already in, so I'm going to look for the other light green. Now this is a lot like a 4x4 reduction from a 3x3, and really, this is a master version, so this is a 4x4 version. So where's the other light green? Right over here. So I'm going to want to move this in such a way to where this will line up with this guy here. So let's see how I can do that. And it looks like I can do that right here. Boom. Okay, so this is together. So I'm going to move this in a position where I can move these guys together. Bang. Okay, so this is my first reduced um, edge right there. Okay, so I've got these two that are already lined up. So I'm going to find the other... Well, these two are already lined up. I've already got the light blue here. So I've got to find another light blue. Right over here. Okay, so let's put this in place. Now, pretty soon I'm going to run into a situation where putting this in might take this out. So I'm going to want to figure out what I'm going to do in that, in that situation. Hmm. Okay, good. So this will come into here, but notice that this is going to get knocked out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this into here and then replace it with another side. So I have to get a feel for what sides go where. So if I were to move this in, boom, that's good. And now I want to substitute this with another side. So if I move this out of the way, you know, move it out of the way over here. I'm going to move this in its place. Then I'm going to move it back. I should be able to move this. Uh, I should be able to move this back. Okay. So I think that worked. This is still in. Now I want to move this in place. And that's going to come from here. So I want to move this in without destroying this. So I'm going to move this in and substitute it with this side here. So here's that, how that's going to work. Move it in. Okay. Now bump it out of the way the same way we do with the 4x4. Move this in its place. Bump it back. And then I can move this back. Okay, so in that way, this is in and this is in. So I think that that's going to work so far. Okay, next we'll do this blue over here. Here's the other blue. So I'm just going to want to put the other blue in this place, which is right here. So let's get this to line up. Now in this way, I don't have to keep track of all the other centers that I did. Because I'm just, I'm taking it out and putting, putting it in again. Okay. That'll come into here. Okay, good. So I still don't quite have it set in my head how I replace this. If I move it into here, I'm going to replace it with this side here. Okay, so move this in, bump, bump it out of the way, move this in its place, wheel it back, and move this back in. Now, I shouldn't have to look for it too much, but these two are still in. I've got these two paired. And I've got this paired over here. So now I, I just need to move them into each other. Okay, let's see how these are going to fit together. Okay, just like this. So if I'm going to move it in from here to move it out, I'm going to substitute it with this here and here. So down, bump it out of the way, move this guy in, move it back, and then move this back like so. 
Okay. So in, in, and in. So these are all good. And that's how I'm going to continue to reduce these centers over here. Um, well, these edges. I'm going to keep doing that until all of these guys are in. Okay, so we're going to try this again. I think the sun is getting to my brain. Anyway, I'm going to move this into here. And upon doing that, I'm going to take this. Hmm, where do you want to go? Uh, I think you have to move out of the way here. Then I'm going to bring this guy in here. Yeah, that works. Now we're going to move you back. Like so. And now this will safely and kindly move back over to here. Okay, very good. So this orange one mercifully and happened to come over to here. So now I can move this in. Well, let's plan this out. It's, I like to uh, substitute it with this side over here. So we're gonna go down, turn, up, back, and up. Okay, we should be getting to the last few, although I don't know that we are. Okay, here's a purple. And here's another purple one that I'm going to try to move in to here. Now, what can I replace it with? I'm actually running out of real estate. To be honest with you, I think we're down to the last three. If that's the case, one, two, three, we are. Okay, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my, my core edge pieces, which are these two. I've got to make sure these are squared because I can only three cycle now. And it's going to be very complicated to get everything three cycles in exactly the right way. So I have to find the other edge here. No, it's gotta be this one. So it's not this piece here, it's this piece. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to here. And how this works is I have to make sure I three cycle this correctly. So this is gonna move to here. This guy has to participate. So let's not come out of the way here. Just get you out of that plane of thinking. And I'm going to have to substitute it with this. Now when I put this down... Whoop, uh, let's see. Like this. When I move this down... Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Uh, which piece am I... I'm looking for this piece, actually. Uh, trying to position this here. Okay, I guess I'll have to do it from this perspective. Okay, when I put this down, this purple one is going to be bumped out of the way. So I'm going to move this purple one in to, to bump it back. Alright, we'll just make sure that we can do that. Let's move it into a position here. Okay, so let's move you out because you're going to be moved in. So we're going to go down. And then I'm going to move you down like so. Move you... Now, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm losing track a little bit of what I want. Uh, okay. This guy sh should not be here. I'll put him over to here. Okay. So this will come over to here. Now I'm going to take this, move this piece to here, move this up, move this back, and now this will come up to here, which will land the purple piece in. Ah, okay. So that's what I wanted to do. As long as all of these guys are in, I have ways of moving this. So this, this purple needs to go to here, this white needs to go to here, and this kind of beige needs to go here, and I design an algorithm to do just that. I just have to make sure that I get it all set up correctly. So this white will go to here, this will go to here, and let's just make sure that that's what's going to... Okay, that is what's going to happen. I just have to make sure I remember the algorithm. And what this algorithm is, is I'm going to do my middle move, so we're going to go... And this, this is the two ed corners of the side that I'm going to be moving. So we're going to go... Up, then R, U, R, I, U, I, 
and then down, and U R U I R I, and lo and behold, this did indeed move all these pieces in. So the good news is, is we now have all of these edges um, reduced. Now that was fun. That was fun because the perspective, as you can see, what constituted as a side was hard for me to visualize. It was very hard for me to visualize because my head was still thinking dodecahedron. So all I, all I was doing is I was placing things in and then substituting with the side that wasn't in and putting it in that position, but I had a hard time kind of wheeling my head around that. But I think if I tried to do the solve again, I could sort of figure my way through that. So the next step is I need to put in the corners. Once I put in the corners, that tells me the structure of the puzzle. Now this could be an easy step or a difficult step. It's an easy step, which means it's actually already in. It's actually already solved. There's no specific configuration. It can be solved with the corners deciding the sides. But I wanted it to have a certain color configuration. I wanted red, white, and now I want the blue over here. And that's gonna be the dark blue. Here's a dark blue here, but it's upside down. So I'm gonna to want to Maybe put this in a way to where it's not upside down. Red like that. Red, white, blue. Now the blue, dark blue has to be opposite light blue and it's not. So maybe I can finagle, okay. There it is, but it's upside down. So I'm gonna say, now normally what I do is I create a side. Here, here, and here, this is a side. But I don't want this in because I want the orange, the yellow rather, opposite white. So I'm gonna move this here. Do I like that? Well, here's a green, and I want this to be a light green. So where's my light, uh, dark green rather? Right here. So this, I want this dark green to be right here. So I haven't quite decided what color this would be, but I know it's not gonna be this one. So maybe I have to move it from this perspective here. So I still have my red, white, and blue, so that's good. I don't know if I like this here. So what if I go like this, move this down. Nope, 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 can't do it like that. Okay, I may be making this harder than it needs to be, but um, let's keep it in this position. And I want to make sure that this blue is uh, this is going to be a, a, a dark blue here, a light blue rather. So I've got this here as a side. I turn it upside down and I want it to be this side. So here's light blue and that's opposite dark blue, so that's good. Here's light green and that's opposite dark green and that's good too. Okay, so this might be the configuration that I want, except this yellow is not opposite this white. So let's go to my red, white, red, white, and blue. So we like this side over here. If I turn this upside down, we like this blue, this is correct, and we like this green. But I'm gonna say these two are upside down. And the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna go down, down, up, up. We'll move this back and let's see what happens. Red is opposite pink, that's okay. White is opposite this, and that's not okay. So, I'm thinking about it, and I actually think I like that color scheme. Um, as long as I've got the red, white, and blue, but, uh, but uh, orange across from purple kind of has a similar flair to it. And instead of yellow being across from white, we're gonna keep it across from gray. And in terms of the white itself, the white will be White will be across from this beige color, which is kind of a light color anyway. So I think I'm good like this. It's a slightly different solve position, but uh, but I think I'm good like this. If when coming home I find that it doesn't mix uh, with the uh, color scheme of the Mega Minx, then, then I'll change it. Um, okay, so the next step is to get these edges in place. This is already in place and this is in place. I just have to move the blue one in. Maybe I can easily do that. So where's the light blue? It's right here. So with the light blue, I actually have a way of rolling it in. 
to here. But what I have to do... Well, let's see. So this is in, and now I want to actually roll a red one in. So if I were to move this, well, I, I want to move this. I want to move this guy out. Okay. Yellow or red. So still trying to get a feel for the. All right. So if I move this in here. I can use an algorithm to move this red to here, but I'm going to end up moving this green one out, and I don't want to do that. So, let's see, what can I do instead? Instead, what I can do is move this to here. Put this into here and then move it back. Okay, that's what I'll do. So what this algorithm does is it rotates this round with a sort of a variation of the SUNY, where this is my R, U, R I, U, R, U, R I, U. That's my octahedral SUNY. And it keeps the edges, the corners where they are, but it does move the edge, uh, edges in place. Now that I have that, I can now move this back for splat. Okay. So I've got this in, I've got this in. This is in and this is in. Now if I can put the yellow one in, if I can find it, it's right over here. So can I move the yellow one in place to here? And the answer is sure. If I move this over to here, I can move this to here and then move it back. So once again, R U R I U R U R I U and once more R I U R U R I U. So that technique coordinates my centers. Now I just move this back. So my first side has all the edges in, 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 and in, and you can see they correlate with these guys here. So let's find some more. This blue wants to go over to here, but we don't really like the fact that it'll knock this out. But I do want to move this blue to here, but I have to find a way to move this out, and I kind of undid myself because all of these that I'll move into this position are already solved. So. What can I do to make that happen? Well, I can move this to here. And then, let's see, yeah, this isn't in yet. Move this to here, and then move it out. Now I just have to remember to move this back down. I should be able to remember it because it's gonna put this to here, and then I'll move the blue one back. So it's gonna be R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, U. So now I just remember to move this blue one oop, back like so, and then this wheels around like thus. Okay, so in that way, I have this one in and this one in, now I just want to get this silver one in. Uh, and that's over this beige, and that's this guy over here. So if I hold it here, that's an easy one. This will move over to here by doing that algorithm. This will go here. This white will go here. Maybe I can do something clever and move this guy like so. So now I can move the blue one in at the same time. So that's purple, rather. R U R I U R U R I U and once more R U R I U R U R I U Yeah, okay. Okay, this purple was here and then it had to move over there. Oops. 
and it was these guys that I moved. So that means this moves here, so this is in. And uh, was that it? Okay, let me check my let me check myself here. So now what I have left is I should only have. You notice that most of these are already in. And this is the hardest part here. This gray has to be here. This white has to be here, and this pink has to be here. Okay, so I'm down to the last three, and I've got two in the same layer, which is good. I just have to move this around. I'm going to let this orange return to home. That's going to be my way home, basically. Okay, I'm going to now move this to here. Okay, this will move it. Okay, by doing that, I got to get my gray to here. So I'm going to do this algorithm twice. I just have to remember to move this back down. Move the pink in once I get the pink into there. So that's going to be R U R I U R U R I U and again R U R I U R U R I U. Okay, so we move this pink in like we said. And I said the orange one was my key home and bang. So, with that said, all of these oranges, well, all of these edges, which have been reduced, are now correlated with the proper corner. And this is assuming we like the color scheme. You may not, and it's not the original one that I have, but I, I think I might like this better. I got my red, white, and blue, okay. So now it's a matter of reducing these in, and that's done based on that three-cycled algorithm. Now let's see if I can keep my wits about me to see if I can make this happen. But this green can make it to here. I just have to do the algorithm twice. So so let's see if this will work. We're gonna go down, 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 up, and then up, and down, up. I'm just paying very close attention to these corners up. Now one more time should move it in. So we've got down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Okay, that did place that there, so I, I know the concept works. And let's see if there's other easy ones that we could do. Okay, so back again. Oh, actually this can go into here to exchange with this. Now if I can move this out of the way, I'm doing well. Yep, right here, I can move all these out of the way. Okay, so this will move into here, but I can actually move both in here. So we've got down, 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 up, and then up, and down, up, and up. So we got two. Oh, I wonder if I can do more two first like that because that really speeds things along. How about this other gray and somehow move it into here? Now let's see. It's going to participate with this. And if I can move this gray into here. Oh, I think I can. Yep, okay, so I can move both of these by doing it twice. So I've got down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up, and then once more should do it, down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Okay, now we're gonna have to kind of find our way home here. I think this came to here, and then this came down to here. Yep, okay, so I've got this all filled in. To take more opportunities, like I know this can move into here. This will participate, and if I move this guy in here, 
then that will just look better. So we've got down, just this angle, down, down, up, and up, down, up, and up. Okay, so let's get back that which we took out. So you can see I'm slowly filling in the gaps. Okay, sorry about the view, it got a little too breezy outside, but I thought I would just go through some more um, uh, some more moves here. Uh, looking at what we have now, yeah, let's see what else we can do. I've got two yellows, which would be nice to put in. And I've got this blue, which can go down to here. So we're gonna just move this guy down. Actually, this can go to here. So I'm actually gonna move both of these two for two different reasons. So both goes down, Let's try that again. So we've got down, 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 up, and up, down, up, and this up here, and up. Okay. So that put this here, which I like. Now this I'm going to put here by just doing it once. This will come to here, this will come to here. Uh, now if I could move maybe this guy here, then I can get a purple one here, a blue one here, and an orange one here. So we've got a nice little three cycle here. So we've got down, just with this end. Down, down, up, and up. Down, up, and up. Okay, so that put these guys in here, and let's move this back. So that's more of an example of what I mean, but I really would like to see if I can finagle this guy to go into here. If I could do that, that would make things easier. And I can do it if I move this once and this over here. Then it'll work, but I have one final move to get this out of the way. Now, that was two moves that I did, so I, I really have to remember what I did um, to, get this, to get this in. But I gotta get this out of the way, so one more move, bang. So the next thing I have to do is, I, I have to remember to move this back, but let's just do it, it's worth the risk. So we've got down, down, down. Up, and up, down, up, and up. So this is a great exercise of concentration. So we move this down like we did. As I recall, this had to move like so to match this to here and move this up. So by doing that deconstruction, I was able to bring that in there. So while we're sort of on a roll, let's see what else we can do. We'd like to be able to move this guy in, and I can just turn him like so. So this will participate, but I don't want this in here. I just want to move this to here. So what can I do to get this out of the way? I could move it here, and okay, that works. And I think it moves it to the white if I do it twice. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Down. Down, down, up, up, down, up, up, and once more, down, 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 up, and up, down, up, up. Now, let's see if we can't remember what we did. I can move this to here, that moves this corner back, so that's what we want. I'll move this up like so. Is that it? Yep. That's so I figure for the last three, I might as well do this more in a better setting on the outside. So let's see if we can't get these to come together. So I want this to participate and this is within this circle. So I'm just gonna move this over to here. And then I wanna bring this to here. And that should do it. Just have to remember to move this back and 
all that good stuff. So, let's not mess this up. We've got down, 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 up, and we've got up, up, down, up, up. So let's remember we did to get it back. This, I believe, had to come here. And then one final turn, this comes over to here, and it's done. So the master dodecahedron has now been conquered, has now been solved. I really, really love this puzzle. It's, uh, uh, first off, I love the shape of it. I, I love how it looks like such a pure platonic solid of a dodecahedron, yet functions as a face-turning octahedron. I love how it looks when it's scrambled. Once again, another quality puzzle by Raphael, which probably should be mass-produced at some point. But as great as it is to play with puzzles, to solve puzzles, to evaluate puzzles, there still is an entire world out there to discover and to enjoy. So I would tell you to not forget to do that. And that's what I'm going to do right now. But until then I say, once again, thanks Raphael for your fantastic puzzle. And thanks for watching.